Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Corey, better known as the C-Man, and I want to welcome you to another edition of the C-Man's Cinema. Sit down. Yes, once again, I am watching this television show while it is daytime here on the East Coast. Uh, yesterday, I did a uh, three-movie run. I saw three movies yesterday. I got food in between each movie, uh, but I saw three horror movies yesterday uh, between vacation and being sick. I've really only been focusing on the Star Wars stuff. Haven't gotten to the movies in a while. So I was like, you know what? I got an off day. I'm going to just go ham on movies. We went and saw The Exorcism, which was not great. But I just always enjoy Russell Crowe. So, like... And there, it has moments. But the overall movie just... Yeah. Then The Watchers, uh, which I liked more than The Exorcism... But hearing that the book that it's based on, like, lands in a sinister spot, I kind of wished the movie that we got had gone and leaned more into that. That being said, I did think that Ashana Knight Shyamalan uh, did a very good job behind the camera, as we've seen her uh, do in Servant. And seeing her kind of take a movie start to finish was was nice. I thought she did a good job. I think she's got a strong career ahead of her. Um, I just want my horror sometimes in that realm that they were playing and to be a little bit darker and then we finished it off with a quiet place uh day one which was absolutely tremendous like it was like it was just like a, a nice continual build up the ladder to like two mediocre not great horror movies to like a just absolute banger because much like the other quiet place movies that come from john krasinski who was involved in the story but not the script um this is one of those ones where, like, you find a good human story and you put someone like Lupita Nyong'o in the middle of that. Like, she's one of the best in the business. And in a movie where you have to be quiet a lot, her emoting talent is best in the business for me. Um, she's unbelievable. But you have good human stories that you're able to attach yourself to and take yourself through this journey while delivering on all the great Quiet Place stuff. And in all honesty, I think it's as good as the first one. Um, it's like, it's like they're two different movies. Like the remote location, the city. And everything that I wanted about a Quiet Place day one in the city, I pretty much got. Joseph Quinn, also excellent. So I had a good movie day. But when I got home, <laughs> it was like 9.30. I said, nah, I'm going to bed. So here we are. We're getting ready to dive into the sixth episode after a fifth episode that I think was a good rebound from four. Still had some issues with some things, but overall, probably the best episode of the series so far. What are we talking about? Why don't you pull up a chair, take a seat. We are getting ready to take a watch and dive in, spoiler filled, into the Acolyte Season 1, Episode 6, Teach Slash Corrupt. We are back to the dual titles. <laughs> I gotta try to figure out what it is about. I mean, obviously, like I said last week, four or five should have been one episode, and then you would have only had one episode in the mix with one title, which would be the Destiny, where you go back to the like the early days for the twins and kind of cover all that stuff. But nevertheless, uh, here we are. Teach corrupt. Before we get there, a couple things to talk about from last week. Uh, after watching the episode, I learned some things. Uh, for one, Cortosis is the metal, not Beskar, uh, that the Stranger, which is what the, the Sith, Sith is being called right now, Kynir's character, uh, is rocking on his helmet and his gauntlets. Um, I did not know about Cortosis. Um, but again, I think that's one of those things where people who are getting on Leslie Headland, you're destroying Star Wars, you don't know anything. I, I, are you kidding me? Who pulls Cortosis that doesn't know their Star Wars-ish? Like, I feel like I know my Star Wars stuff in certain pockets, right? Like, the things that I have read and the things that I have watched, I feel real good on. But, like, that's deep-cut Star Wars, man. <laughs> and to see it brought to life in live action was just absolutely glorious. Every time the stranger did it, I was like he you know almost to a point where it's like oh man it happens a lot like he does I think four or five times but if you're fighting people with lightsabers and you got something that'll knock them out to give you an advantage yeah you would use that all the time and every time it happened pop it was just mm, mm, so good um that being said the other thing about last week's episode you know I think I was critical of, of some things because there are story elements that just still are not clicking right things that don't feel like they're earned and you look at just well, it's the combo, right? Things that I don't feel like have been earned that happen. 
to things that happen where you kind of scratch your head. And the big one for me is the whole May switcheroo, right? Like you're doing the Freak Friday thing. And you're in this scenario where it's like, you have a tattoo on your head. Like I was I was held up last week on the soul of it all, right? Like this dude could sense where Kalnaka was, could sense the stranger coming well before the other Jedi, yet he couldn't sense the difference between May and Osha. That aside though, physically, like she cuts her hair, you got a huge ass like magic tattoo on your head like it's gonna be so obvious and the, the thing that bothered me at the end of the episode is like you have the basil character kind of teeing up like oh he's the one that's gonna figure it out because he's smelling things and he'll tell soul but like i think soul should know from jump now to be fair one of the things i've said multiple times throughout the course of this series when people get critical is like hey we still got three episodes left. Let the show take us all the way there, right? Maybe we find out this episode, Soul knows it's May, and he's playing with that. And if that's the case, cool. I'm here for it. I feel like it would be nicer if these things were wrapped up in one episode so that you don't go into a week going, man, how are you, like, why is this happening? Because everything else in last week's episode, I didn't say it, but after rewatching it, and kind of going back through all of the episodes, is the strongest of the five. Like, the action is sublime. It's the best lightsaber stuff we've gotten in the Disney era, and it's right there with Duel of the Fates and the revenge battle between Obi-Wan and Anakin. Like, the speed and ferocity of the stranger is just tremendous, and how he uses the dark side, the Tosis, everything from the choreography to just the visual pop like being in the forest at night the lightsabers look phenomenal and that aside like it's dark enough where you can still see everything that's going on but the lightsabers pop and everything that was going on in all of those sequences was tremendous whether it was you know the stranger taking out all of those jedi at the start the battle between Soul, the battle with Jackie, the battle with Jackie and Soul. Like, the choreography, unbelievable. Shout out to Manny Jacinto, too. One of the other things I talked about last week was, like, I wonder who the stunt double is. Because, you know, you got the helmet. It could be someone that's not Manny. But I would love to find out that it is Manny Jacinto. And sure enough, video came out last week of his training. And he trained for four months to be able to do all the lightsaber combat. And when you watch the training video, that's the dude that's doing everything in the show. And that's freaking awesome awesome i like i said i've never seen manny jacinto before this uh, i hear really good things about the good place but i adore this guy right now like he's the best thing in the show for me which is crazy to say because i think it's been lee jung jay right like he soul has been my favorite character same with daphne keen and charlie barnett like the 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 soul jackie yord combo was just so strong and i like amanda stenberg and her performance has been good. I just think the way they're handling those characters after those initial episodes, they're the ones that you don't really care about, which I think is a problem in and of itself. Um, but, like, you know, I've been with this Manny Jacinto guy. Like, I've loved everything that he was doing up until that reveal. And, again, I think the reveal is not executed well. Like, you could call out Chimera in episode two going, that's going to be the guy we see at the end of the episode. And then even going at the end of the day, going into night, you can kind of get the vibe that based on what happens and who's on the planet, it's probably Manny Jacinto. So I wish they could have held that or put that in a way where it was more of a surprise. Where like, oh, damn, that's the dude that gave... Like, if he would have just been a guy that gave her poison, there, there was very minimal combo. You could tell they've worked together, but, like, you don't get as deep as he kind of gets and acts the way that he kind of acts throughout the course of that episode to make you go, that's probably the dude. The pop just would have been cooler. Now, the predictability element aside, the actual delivery of the reveal was tremendous. Like the pop, pop, pop on Jackie, which kills me. And then the slow drop and you're like, <gasps> like that's what you want the, <gasps> We didn't get that, but it was dope to watch. And now that the character is here and established, like I said this last week, I almost wish the show was coming from Chimere's perspective the whole time. But 
I think the execution of his arrival and how he is presented in that episode is just fantastic. And I think that he's ultimately getting his prize, right? Like, he's had May, and I, I'm telling you, it's got that I heard that Headland had said there's two Sith in the show, which means we're gonna meet the Master, and I'm like 100% positive it's Coral, which also, apologies last week, I said Cora and Coral. They were, I was flip flopping them. I was, I was not, my names was off last week. Uh, but Mother Coral, I think she's gonna be the Master, and that'll probably tie into the May story, but I think. And this could be coming from Coral and and Chimere. And the other thing, too, like the way he said, you don't recognize me, to Soul, as if maybe he was he back. Like, there, there's so much more going on, I think, at, at that witch's coven from episode three than what we've been given. And if Chimere is there, like, that would be fascinating. But could the potential target for him have always been Osha? It's possible, and I honestly think, based on everything that we've been given, when Osha finds out whatever the Jedi did, and that changes her perception of reality, I think that she could very well be even more angry and have more rage than May, and could be the acolyte of the show by the end. Again... (laughs) running into like things that feel kind of predictable but at the end of that episode it definitely feels like Kymir's got his target finally and this could be the situation where if he does know things that we don't know about that night and can reveal them to Osha I think she could flip now on the flip side of that like I said you've got Soul with a May impersonating Osha I hope it's shown to us pretty quickly that Soul knows it's May. Otherwise, I'm just going to be like, like, why? <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, but I think it's very likely that May could end up flipping to the light. And and that you know that could be like the, oh, hidden in plain sight, flip flop a thing. That, I think, could be where we're going. Um, as we look forward to 6 now, I do hope... That the tonal shift that we felt in 5 with the brutality of the kills, right? Like, I mean, yes, the lightsaber stuff, but like, when he got to your, that was a boka right on camera. Like, the tone of the entire fifth episode is the tone and the vibe I've wanted this show to be when it was described to us as like a revealing of how the Sith re-infiltrated the world and kind of built themselves back up. Like, we getting into that. Like, the Sith ain't present, but they're there. Where we started to kind of scratch the surface last week, tonally, I hope we continue with this episode. And I'm just probably more excited than anything for whatever we get next with Chimere because I do think while it was telegraphed and predictable the reveal and the building of this character very very strong last week and I just want more to the point where I'm like he should have been the whole show like follow him start to finish like I think I might have said this last week but if I didn't I've definitely said it to friends of mine like I think the philosophy for Star Wars needs to shift and I think you need to have two shows going on at any given time. Maybe four. Like, if you're doing both ends of the timeline, all right, two and two. But you have one show that's geared toward the Sith or the Dark, and one that's geared toward the Jedi and the Light. Like, I would love to see them go all the way back. You want to pull more Legend stuff? Let's pull Darth Bane. Let's pull Plagueis. Let's pull Darth Revan, right? Like, go far back, as far back as you want tell those stories and then find the corresponding Jedi to tell that story. Uh, them two series running parallel leading you to a film. Like that to me seems like the logical formula. And this show I think gives you a, a, a taste of what you could get if you were to lean more into the Sith stuff. And I think if you were able to have a show that's dedicated to the Sith perspective and dedicated to the Jedi perspective, we could get the best of both worlds and we could kind of be in a place that I think everybody would be very happy with. Lucasfilm, Star Wars, Disney, call me. Anyway, it's time to turn to episode six. And like I said, I'm really hoping that tonally we keep kind of riding with what we were doing last week. And I'm just excited to see what we get 
next with Chimere, and hopefully we can find some better beats for the twins and the Jedi. Um, like it, it seems like if I'm not riding with Soul, because Jackie and Yord are gone, like the Soul stuff has been good, it's starting to falter a little bit, but been solid. I feel like this Chimere stuff is gonna be real good. We gotta find better footing for the twins story. If we can do that, maybe the show can save itself. But at the bare minimum, let's go dark, baby. So let's not waste any more time. Scooch on over. Okie dokie, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm a Get Brainwashed you. All right, sir, man. You're All right. a criminal name. And you must pay for your crimes. Like, even without the haircut, <laughs> the freaking tattoo is so obviously there. Her sister. I mean, she's, she's she is hiding it a bit there. But, like, I don't know, man. Those are the things about this show that bother me. Like, those awkward beats and this. I, I just, I don't, that's what I'm most interested in, man, is, like, seeing where we're at with Chimere and osha and like where we're gonna go with that stuff i do like that we're gonna start here osha chimere check this crib out huh yeah i live in a cave at least you got a pool <laughs> hey your sister banged you up a bit again i do want to reiterate i've liked everything amanda stenberg has done to this point i don't think any of the issues i'm having with the twins is her fault it's just story-wise you had me intrigued early on but you lost me pretty quick with these characters so i'd like to see us get back where they're clicking a little bit more for us in the ways like soul and chimere now are Look at this little freaking guy. Also, the place you don't know, you gotta be drinking what? Like, I don't know if I would trust anything liquid wise. So, May left all her stuff. Fascinating. Look at this, though, man. Kyner's got the, got the hookup, bro. This is like. You see, like, them fantastical, like, resorts and retreats, you know, that people can go away on for, like, vacation in the Star Wars world? That's where we at, yo. <laughs> Check this out. Where is that? Like, is that on the back of Kofar? Or did... Did Kaim... No, that's not Kofar, for sure not. Skymir so took her to a different place. But yeah, wherever he's held up, man, that little, like, private island? Gone with your bad self, Skymir. Who are your hookups? Who's Mother Coral? No. Unknown planet. Okay. So not a place that we are previously familiar with. And an unknown planet, <laughs> as much as it is right on the nose, is a good spot for a Sith to hide out. If you're, you know, trying to make a comeback. Look at these weird little guys. I tell we have been on a roll with our creatures this season, at least. Like, we've gotten some cool little practical creatures. Well, I can't tell if Basil is practical or CGI or a combo of the two. What is out there? And are we going to meet our second Sith? Which, again, I think it's been pretty telegraphed. But, totally, i here for what just that open was. We're just leaving. Code. So, wait, this is the other thing, man. How are these people functioning, yo? They're just leaving Kofar, and Chimere got her off-planet? Emergency code zero. There's been a... A massacre? My whole team is dead. Compton? No, 
disgusting. And the other thing, too, that we didn't mention, the Sith element. Does it get mentioned? Does it make its way back to the council? This test, you must divine oh, what wow, she's just remembering the last time she was on this ship. It was the same ship. I must speak to Master Banestra. But, like, like, if I was Sol, I'd be like, Code Red Green Sith, but... <laughs> So, like so, where? I'm going to reset the transceiver. Take the wheel. I can't tell if he can tell or not. But like, you'd have to assume he could feel the feeling that like she was getting ready to maybe look to kill him. Where's the little Basil? I mean, I guess I could give him a pass because he's dealing with a lot. Like, he lost his Padawan, he lost Yord, he lost his whole team to a sit. Like, there's a lot going on in the bridge. So maybe I'd give him a pass if he doesn't sense that it's May. Yet. Yeah, Lee, Lee Jung Jae just so damn good, man. Another person who is excellent at emoting. I'm learning as I watch more of him. <laughs> this can convey so much. Yeah, Basil, that's like, what are you sneaking around for, man? Shot. He's basically gonna fix him. <laughs> I, he is practical, which is I freaking like. I love that. One thing that I think is bar none undeniable. I love the fact that Headland has let leaned into actual practical sets, practical creatures like CGI where it matters. And works and counts, but practical everything else. The the feel of the show, while I think the the stakes have felt kind of small, this is how I want to see things. You know, where it's like you're on locations and you're, you use the vol, not using the volume at all here, but in general, I think the volume used sparingly can be really good for certain things. Oh damn, yo, Chimera's got some scar. Like he got some. I'm. T I want. Uh oh. Oh, she's seeing some things she shouldn't. And he 100 percent knows she's there. Like this dude, power set wise, like he's got to be able to sense she's there. And she walking around the the twins had the same. Um, but like I. I want Kymir's backstory, man. Like, how'd he get that scar? What made him go dark? That's why I think the show should have just been his story. Like, build that out. We want to build out the Sith during the High, you know, Republic era. Take me from the Sith character. But we got three episodes where maybe we can live in that a little bit more. Got his double lightsaber. One of the how does it feel? <laughs> knew he could. Knew he knew he, she was there. Don't move. Feels good, doesn't it? To hold one in your hand again. I assume you didn't keep your own saber when you left the order. Your stance is good. Ah. Uh... Keep your other elbow up higher. How's for a swifter block? Stay where you are. If you're not gonna join me, I'd like to put my clothes back on. This, I'm digging this vibe right now. I'm wondering. If it's honorable to kill me like this, heat of battle is justified. A few hours later, it's vengeance. Now you're wondering how I can meet you by. <laughs> I can't. Not exactly. Your anger betrays your thoughts. Yep. Why bring me here? Why not kill me? Am I supposed to be your prisoner? No. Prisoner? I want you to be my. You're the one with the weapon. <laughs> Did you kill Saul? 
No, but I need to get back to that. No. Did you kill May? No. Interesting you ask about him first, though. Mm hmm. He taught you the Jedi to say that. But he's more to you than that. His father. Something she didn't have. Relation. Master. Apprentice. And pupil. Or pu he likes to say pupil. While she was holding the double saber, though, one of the other things, uh, reading the Bane book, I learned the double saber can be one kyber crystal that powers both ends, which I think is what Darth Maul had, or it can be two crystals that power separately, which can allow you to disconnect them things, which is what I think Chimera's got going on. <clears throat> I'm mad at myself for not reading these Legends books earlier in life. Is they're so good. This is crazy to me, though. Dave does you saved me. That man, he corrupted your sister. Pushed me to a place I... I'm sorry. I just can't believe he can't tell it's May. It's time for me to face the High Council. To tell them everything. Everything? Are things working again? No, it's still on the fritz. Well, the whole ship is on the fritz. Do you want to take a look? Give me a couple minutes. Guys, you're supposed to be a mechnic. That drive me crazy that Soul hasn't... We haven't identified her as May yet. My colleagues in the expansion region will vote in favor of an external review of the Order. Rancor has never been a friend of the Jedi. But I worry his fear has convinced so many. A review should not be cause for alarm. The Jedi are always transparent with the Senate. This is a case of an ambitious Senator grasping for power. Apologies, Senator. I must go. I feel like this that sequence right there kind of makes sense to some of you more than me just now. What is it, Mark? We received a distress call from Master Sol. Apparently he's on a mission in the Outer Rim. What did he say? There were casualties. Who? His whole team. The entire team. Get that whip saber out for Nestra. Get him back on the comms. I, unfortunately, we've lost contact. Prepare a rescue team to depart for the planet Kofar immediately. Uh, how do you know where he is? I sent him there. But he's not in Kofar anymore. You speak as if you were a Jedi. I was. Oh. A long time ago. Here we go. Kind of backstory. It was a really long time ago. How old is he? Why'd you bring me here? Why do you think? Leverage? Nah. Everyone does seem to want you. If you keep me here, Soul comes to you. He's found me before, and his strength in the Force is very powerful. You think that his strength, that's your strength in the Force, Osha. Someone ought to teach you that. Hmm. I like how he's doing. I'd start swimming if you want to make it to the ship before sundown. Or you could wait for the tide to go out. Bye. You hungry? I like that you get, like, you want to go, go on. I ain't gonna stop. Like, the way he's, like, nonchalanting her is excellent. Because it's doing exactly what he wants, man. It's pulling her in. Like, I... Take your... What, what is really happening, right? Like, uh, how he's playing it is excellent. Gotcha! Ah! What? <laughs> That's absurd! Okay. <laughs> Look, I think this little Basil guy, but like, this is what I mean about your tonal stuff. I mean, this is just a little goofy. I'm a sucker for goofy though. Oh, resetting Pip. Oh. Did you just make him bad? Turning Pip into her own droid. Interesting. Can you run a check on the power system? Fascinating. It's interesting that we keep going back to those critters. Like, what? What is? What did you mean, my strength in the Force? Exactly that. If you were a Jedi, you know it's something you must exercise. 
without training your faith. And that's what they told you. Yep. The Jedi teach there's only one way to access the Force. And if you don't do it their way, it fades. But there is another way. Dark side. Below the surface of consciousness are powerful emotions. Anger. Hate. Fear. Loss. Desire. That's the path to the dark side. Yeah. Semantics. <laughs> Dude, Manny crushing it. You murdered my friends. I killed Jedi. I killed those who threatened my existence. You killed Yord. A man who didn't hesitate to turn mm -hmm. you in for a crime you didn't commit. You killed Jackie. And where did you think that was going to go? Yeah. You would have had the same relationship with her that you have with your master. One-sided. Mm. Why do you love people who can only go so far? Who can't go as deep as you can? How do you know all this? I'm not my sister. I'm not that easily corrupted. That's why you're the... That's why you're the, the choice, right? Because if you can corrupt that, her power is probably far superior. Aren't you forgetting something? You stayed here to do something. Do it. Go ahead. Right through me. Turn it on. A Jedi doesn't attack the unarmed. Why do you still think of yourself as a Jedi? Right? They didn't want you. It's not true. I left. Why? Because I chose to. Are you sure about mm. that? Let me go. What you're feeling right now, this anger, this pain, this is who you are. The Jedi saw it, and that's why they threw you away. Wow, man. They didn't throw it, me away. Then why aren't you a Jedi? Why aren't you a Jedi, Osha? Yeah, that's a great question. Because I failed! Oh! There it is. Tap into it, Osha. Be my least favorite character. Maybe you can be my new favorite character. The manipulation tactics. I lost everything, Osha. But when you lose everything, that's when you're finally free. Dude. Masterful work right there. By the guy who I don't think is the master. I think he's the apprentice, which is why he's looking for an acolyte. But, like, that shit was good. Like, that, I did that level of writing across the board. Are you joining us on the mission, Master? I am. Do, do, do you... Oh, let's get that whip saber going. You get nauseous when you travel through hyperspace? I don't get sick. I find it unsettling. But, Master, I'm sure that these casualties are due to the planet's uncharted environment. You don't I need to handle this personally. I hope that is all right with you. That whole exchange was awkward. <laughs> like, I heard for net like in the like, books, Vernester is like a hardcore badass, and I feel like the show is completely doing the opposite of that with her. This little guy. Osha? Yes? I just can't believe Sol thinks this is Osha. I ran a diagnostic. Had to restart the system. Should be five minutes or so. Sol? What is it? I know it's you, May. How could I not have sensed that villain's true intention? When we first met him on Olega. How you not sense May, bro? When you really want something, it can cloud your mind. You see what you want to see. He fooled us all. Hmm. Your pip droid. Yes, he's okay now. I noticed the way you take care of him to him. Love him, even though he's just a machine. Hey, come. His eyes are red. Even when I was little. I know. I had to lose a lot of myself in order to become a Jedi, even if I didn't know it at the time. I'm sorry if you felt that way. Could I feel any other way? Figure it out, soul. Come on, Have you bro. told me everything that happened on Brentok? You are very young. But I'm not now. You can tell me. Like, doesn't she already know if it's Coral that's the master? Like, what's the play here? I guess if she... If Coral had taken control of her in any way. By yourself. My name is Finally. Took you damn long enough, soul. Yeah, see the tattoo? Master Soul. The rescue team is on their way. Leave your transponder off. But like what I can't tell now is like, did he know the whole time? Or did he just figure it out based on what she said there? Or did Basil tell him? Where are you headed? <laughs> Saw that coming. Where are they going to find that? Also, wild 
that soul left all those bodies behind. You think all right, Master? What did they say? Seems an Umbramoth colony hatched last night and wreaked havoc on the local settlement. If the Jedi had been anywhere near that colony, that could explain a large amount of casualties. It could. What is she? She knows more than she's saying, too. Uh, she's got a clear motive for going to Kofar. Is it a cover-up? Is Vernestra the master? Like, I'm starting to think more with, like, the Kiati Mundi stuff. This is gonna be a group of Jedi who decide to keep stuff secret about the Sith. I feel like that's where we're going. Did you give the same pitch to my sister? Hmm. You made a mistake with me. I thought she wanted more than just revenge. I thought she wanted what I want. What do you want? Power. The power of two? Yes, the power of two! Where'd you get that scar? Oh. How do you think I got it? He, everything he's doing is manipulating her. Threw me away. Your Jedi Master? Kurtosis. Any against lightsabers. But also a sensory deprivation headpiece. Like we used as young legs. Mmm. Blocks out all your senses? So it's just you and the Force. And what you bring with you. Try it on. I don't trust you. I freaking love this performance from Manny Jacinto, man. But you should learn to trust yourself. He's just so real, you know? He says he's seeking the power of two. So did he... Maybe he was the apprentice and he bailed on his master? Go solo? And now is trying to get an accolade to become a mat? Like, I'm interested. Again... Cannot believe that he left all these bodies, but of all the bodies, like Jackie, how do you not bring Jackie on the ship with you? Like, if you're not gonna carry everybody, you don't bring the Padawan. Like that just, oh, man, Yord. Yeah, they was all killed by lightsabers, not by bugs. No sign of Osha or her twin. They must have survived somehow. What did this? What happened here? What do you see? Dead Jedi. An explosion, then a battle. One versus many. His power extraordinary, his skills erratic. Sole aim was to leave no survivors. Oh, here we go. Yes! Lightsaber whip! Oh, that's freaking dope. That was awesome. What does that tell you? A powerful Jedi has fallen. You don't think Master Sol was responsible? That is quite the accusation. Yeah, it is. Who else would possess the power to slay such a strong group? Something to tip the scales. Mm -hmm. He did this. Why would he send us a distress signal? It's time to get back to the ship. We should prepare these bodies for burial. Well, I'm glad the order's gonna take care of the bodies. Yep, you got got. I have no intention. Of and let me go. Well, first things first. <laughs> I will. Believe me. We have a lot to do. We need to find your master. We need to save Osha. But first, you and I are going to talk. Hash it out. I've had 16 years. To think about what I would say to you if I ever got the opportunity. So you're going to listen. So now do we flip back and the episode ends or the episode ends there? Alright, cool. We're flipping back. I want, I want this episode to end on Chimere and Osha. Oh, put the helmet on, Osha! I wish we could have just lived here the whole 
episode. Check that out. What is that? He clearly has been battling for a while. Oh, there's a theory going on with him, too, that we didn't talk about pre-episode that we'll talk about when this is done. Put it on. Put it on. Yes. You and the Force. I didn't even think about that. Like, it's sensory deprivation, which means he can't see anything. And he just... Massacres. That was a very eerie, ominous way to end. And I liked it. Um, I like that episode. Um, I, look, man, I, for me, I think this show is more good than bad. Like, absolutely more good than bad. Um, episode 4 is really the one that's just like, ah, so bad. The problem, though, is just like, it's the... It's those little writing things that we've been talking about where you just sit here and you go... You, you can see the home run that this show should be. But there are just elements of it that make you go this scoring man too like the last two weeks I didn't talk much about the score last week but between this one and uh, last week like part of the tonal shift has been this scoring it's so good um, like I, I really dig the, the scoring each week but the thing that we didn't talk about that happened that's score related last week that plays into a theory that we're starting to hear before we get back to that mask uh, or helmet um, the Kylo Ren theme plays at the end of the episode when Kymir gets Osha I believe that's where it happened um, which leads to a really fascinating theory that, that I, I've, I've heard of which is that Chimere could be the founder of the Knights of Ren, which, like, that would be kind of, like, it's one of those things where it's like the Knights of Ren are, I, I wish we would have gotten more time or fleshed more out in the, the sequel trilogy. So, like, it, it'd be fascinating to introduce a character a hundred years before Anakin that maybe is the one that lays that foundation for that group. Uh, visually, certainly feels like he could fit in. Um, but that that could be one of those things that could be cool to play with, or it could just be completely botched. Um, but I think that's a fascinating theory. And hearing the Kylo Ren theme last week, I think gives a little bit more credence to that theory. So that, that would be something interesting to, to play with for sure. Like I said, I think... Chimere's backstory is the backstory I want, right? Like, I don't... We're going back to Brendock next week, ladies and gents. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's what's happening there. We're gonna get Soul clearing up the other half of the story that we don't know. And I also think that we're gonna get May to maybe clear up some of the story and pieces that we don't know. So, certainly feels like Seven is gonna wrap all of that stuff up. And it'll probably tie into whatever Chimere is telling Osha to kind of complete those two flips next week going into the finale. And that's the, the, the piece that maybe could be the most interesting is I'm not sure where this show lands or how it wraps up. Like, I, I as predictable as the show has been, I don't know if I see the, the full, what the full end could be. My guess is that, you know... Soul is gonna go after Osha, and then, depending on how that wraps up, the story that goes back to the council could be something that's not Sith related. I don't know. That that's the one piece I'll give Headland and her writing team this much. I, I I'm at least not seeing the the end super predictably. Um, I mean, obviously, I think Soul and, and 
and Kaimi are going to show down again in a battle for Osha. But I think Osha's going to flip putting the helmet on. Like that That's the solidification right there. Like it's not the moment that is completely solidified, but I think from the audience's perspective, there's your flip for Osha. Like she's going to go dark side, and I hope it's badass and cool. But I think it's very possible that you're going to end up with May Soul, Osha Kymir, throw down. I think Osha kills May, and Kymir kills Soul. And Vernestra is just left with a, you know, maybe Soul goes rogue, and they find his body, and, you know, Osha can bring him in, and then bounce, and go be a, a, a Sith. Like, that's that's probably... That's probably how, how it happens. Um, logically. But yeah, I think next week we're going to get the rest of that Brendock backstory. And we're going to learn about the other Sith. Which I think is Mother Coral. Um, now, it look. Is one of these where Mother Coral very much could be the master. Maybe Chimere slays her. Kills her. Now is why he's looking for a pupil. Um... You know, I, it's one of those where, again, I just it, the series will lean more into the dark side half of this story. I think this thing could really be hitting. But this episode, I think, does some excellent stuff, specifically tonally. Um, the tone I've been wanting, the things I want to dive into, we're finally starting to go there. And everything this episode does with Chimera and Osha freaking ruled. Um, Manny Jacinto is just absolutely crushing the show. Um, he's so good, and issues are not in the build-up to the character. Now that the character has been revealed, the execution since that moment has been fantastic, and when you look at what Jacinto's been doing the entire show, it all works so well. And to be able to see him kind of morph himself or mold himself into these different things that he needs to be at any given time has been wonderful to watch. And then the teach corrupt element of things, right? How he's corrupting Osha is genius, right? Like she says, I'm not like May. I'm not that corruptible. And I think that's the thing that makes her the more desirable of the two twins, Again, I want to know why and how he knows that she's the one that he ultimately has to get to. Because just the way he was talking about her power, I don't think that's something you learn off of May from training her that you can apply to Osha. It feels like Chimere knows something about Osha. And I don't know exactly what that is. I have a feeling that will probably be revealed in next week because I think it ties back to Brendock and it ties back to Mother Coral and Mother Anasea, and what it is that they created with these two kids. But, I think it's clear as day, Osha's been the goal, right? Like, the way he says, like, everybody seems to want you. Like, even that delivery, I was like, well, yes, May, well, May didn't know Osha was alive, so May wouldn't have wanted Osha. Soul, I think, wants Osha, but everybody, I think... The dark side, the master, is the one that's like, we want Osha, not May. Um, now, whether that's Anasea, whether that's Coral, if it was Mother Anasea, that'd be a cool twist that I, I, I think would have been hidden a little bit better. And if they go that route, I think I'll be quite pleased, even though Mother Anasea didn't really give off dark side vibes, but that was maybe mostly because she's around the kids. I don't know. Um, either way. Right, like the fact that everybody wants Osha. Hmm, why? Like that's I think she's been the main target. And he had the opportunity to try to, you know, get it out of May. You have a twin that's available to you. Figure everything will be the same, but it's not. Okay. Now, why do you send her? Like that's one of the things where it's like she clearly has been working with her master for a long time. She's been trained. This is the assignment he gives her. I think once Chimere realizes he can't get the power that he wants out of May, the way he's going to get the power that he's seeking for the power of two, it has to be Osha. How do you get Osha? May. 
go kill the four Jedi that are responsible for your life being completely ruined. Complete your revenge, right? You bring that mission about, it's very likely that Osha comes out from somewhere and is revealed. So to see that play out that way, if that's what's happening, then once he has her, how he just slow play manipulates her the whole episode was brilliant like it was it, that stre- like all of the Chimere Osha stuff might be some of the best writing that we've had in the show and I don't necessarily know if it is just the, the, the writing in and of itself or if it's Manny Jacinto's delivery of the writing that makes it work so well probably a combination of the two but, like, that's one of those sections, man. Like, you look at those, just how he plays it, right? And, and all the things. Anger, desire, like, all the different things that he says to her. He almost presents her with, right? Going right out the gate. It's like, hey, you know what? I know that she's here. I know that she sees me. I'm going to strip ass naked. Desire. Get into the pool. See what happens, right? It's like he's testing the waters. Okay. She picked up the, the lightsaber, just like I was hoping she would. Looks good in your hand. Does it feel good? Right? Like, trying to get her to reconnect with that part of the Force that he knows is buried in there. Um, like, and, and, right? It feels good to have a lightsaber. The Jedi kicked you out. But, like, even when he says, like, if you're not going to get in the pool, can I at least put my clothes on? Which, like, that was the angle. He, he kind of throws things out to see what she's going to bite at. You know, is it the temptation? Is it the desire? Is it the anger? What is the thing that's going to fuel her to flip? I love watching him play that. And every response to what she does is something that continues to pry at that and put her into spots where she's going to do exactly what he wants. Yeah, you know what? You've got the weapon. Okay, hey, do it. Do it. You can kill me right now. You know, I'm bad. You're good. Off me knowing that she considers herself a Jedi still, or at least someone who comes from the Jedi. He knows that she won't, right? It would betray her most, so pick at that, pry at that, play with that. Oh, man, get real close. Cool. Now, I'm just gonna give you the option. Hey, you know what? We've gone through all this. If you want, you can leave. Uh, I would probably start swimming now, so you can get to the ship before dark, or... You know, wait till the tide rolls out, and then you can go run across the rocks and get to the ship. But you can leave if you want to leave. What? Pulls her in more. And then when you're there working on the helmet, oh, what's the deal with that? Oh, it's a sensory deprivation device, like cortosis. Yes, it can knock out lightsabers, but it also is the type of material they use in the helmets that they were trained in. And how that allows him to tap into the Force. How, if you don't use it, you lose it. Uh, that's just the thing the Jedi say. Is there if you want it. Like, and just his delivery, the quiet approach, it's so alluring. Right? He's doing all the things you want a Sith to do. Like, Manny Jacinto should have been the whole freaking show. <laughs> you know what I mean? like, that is just, like, his stuff is really, really working. And I think it's the delivery. I think it's the understanding. I think it's the commitment to the character um, that really is making that stuff pop. And watching Osha start to land in the place where she, all right, you know, he's gone. He's guy, he doesn't necessarily know that I put pop that helmet on. And that's the last piece, I think, for him, where it's like, put yourself in that sensory deprivation. Take all the things that I've said to you, floating around in your head right now. Tune everything out and see how the Force feels, right? The fact that, like, the Jedi, you gotta train and use it and practice, and that's how you gain the Force. If he can convince her and show her that she can tap into the Force without any of that, the allure, you know, and, and the desire, the temptation, the things that can get you to go there, and s- the way he presents it so humanized, right? Like, I'm not going to rant and rave about the Jedi. I'm going to just say some things to you that hopefully resonate and make you understand that the Jedi aren't what they say they, say they are. You know, it, it's like anyone, you, you flip to just regular religion, right, in, in our world. The temptation and the desire and the things that lead to sin, you can very easily allure a person to, right? If you play the right cards. Here, let me lead all the breadcrumbs. And that's exactly what 
Chimera's doing with Osha. It's like, here's all the breadcrumbs. Just take take one. Take one. Pick it. Take one crumb. You're not, not bad. You just took a crumb. Here's another crumb. Take that one. You're not bad. You just took another crumb. Do you, are you starting to see, as you pick up all these crumbs, are you starting to see that maybe the other side isn't everything the other side says they are? That maybe there's more going on? Like, all those things are just, the corrupting is fantastic. And like I said, I think, and based on what Kymir says, like, when you get to that moment where she accepts that element and the feeling of that power, I think Osha's got to be very, very powerful. <laughs> and... I think we could very much see her kill May, and that be the thing that turns her into the full-fledged pupil. Strike down the thing that's held you back. Done with that. Let's go on. And honestly, like that's a really dark place to go. Like if we end up with uh, getting a reveal of what it is that the Jedi actually did and what actually happened on Brendok, and then if that leads to Soul and May getting struck down by Chimere and Osha, like that's that's dark <laughs> and that's what I want because then the story will make sense I think very much that Vernestra knows a Sith is possibly coming back like just by scouting the landscape of the crime scene you can tell that she's probably even been fearful of this before this moment right so what does she know what does she have to contribute to all of this and like I said is she the master if it's not Mother Coral or Anasea right and they actually did die on Brendok finding out that Chimir was once a Jedi could the infiltration have already happened could it be inside the temple could his master on the Jedi side have been Vernestra and could Vernestra have been a Sith the whole time? The one that shows Chimere the way. Like, that. If it's, if we go that route, I think a lot of things people are complaining about and bitching about disappear, right? Like the whole Kiati Mundi thing? Oh, well, no shit. Nobody knows that the Sith are alive because Vernestra's been hiding that, right? Like, she's been protecting it. Why do... I have to go to Kofar and not try to find where Soul is or go after Soul. I'm going to go to Kofar because I got to make sure the cleanup here doesn't make people think it's a Sith. That I actually think would be the preferable ending. I still think it's going to be Mother Coral. But if that was the route and the play, that would be really interesting. And then again, you're in this situation where it's like, well, I wish we could have done this story a little differently. Like, I think when you look at the broad strokes of what this story is doing, I think it's a positive for Star Wars. I think you're laying some really nice seeds that could turn into things that we can play with at different times that could be really cool. Whether it's going backwards even farther or starting to go forwards. Like, if you do an Acolyte Season 2, you could be teeing yourself up for some really, really interesting things. It's just the full execution isn't quite there. And when you look at the flip side of all of the Chimere stuff that I was loving, Soul, who's been my favorite character to this point, it's 100% Chimere now. I'm all in, man. I love me some bad guys and some Sith action, like... And reading Sith books right now, like, yes, let's lock in on that card. Man, Jacinto, crushing it. But Lee Jung Jae, right? Soul, that's been my guy the whole show. And you just get hit with these things that make you go, what, like, how did it take you so long to figure out it was May? Yeah, you know what? I could give you a pass on getting onto the ship. You got a lot of stuff going on in your head. You just lost your apprentice. Yord may have been another apprentice of his, or at least somebody that he's worked with for a long time. So you got two close people to you, and then a whole bunch of other people that you were responsible for are all dead. That could cloud your judgment, cloud your mind, make you not see. Like It was almost like May was giving us the answer, right? Where it's like, yeah, man, you know what? You got a lot going on. You, sometimes your judgment might get clouded. You can't see things exactly how they are. You know, maybe you just see them the way you want to see them and referring to not being able to tell that Chimere was a, a dark presence. Right from 
go. Oh, that's why he can't. Cool. But then, like, the minute that she says that, is that the flip? Like, there's no, there's no visual cue that tells us when Soul figures it out to the point that, like, May goes to run to the 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 cockpit, try to see if the the comms are working out. The the ship's rebooted. And Soul comes in, knocks her out, and who's behind Soul? Basil. So did Basil tell Soul? Like that's one of those things that just is gonna like drives you nuts. Cause you're right, it's right there. The finish line's right there. All you gotta do is just hit this piece and you don't. And you leave it in a way where you kinda just go, Man, that was like what? Why did we do you know? And and it's those things and the tonal bound like look, I'm not saying that the whole bit with Basil and May trying to figure out how to fix stuff down there isn't Star Warsy. That is Star Warsy humor. That's the type of stuff that, you know, but this show that's not the tone I want in this show. So it's like all those little things add up in a way where you just you can see the execution has not been as strong as I think the conceptual idea. Does that mean studio meddling? Does that mean like we just didn't hit things exactly the way that we needed to i don't know but somewhere along the way something got tripped up where it's like this concept and the broad strokes are all there for the thing that we want what we're getting in the close-up stuff is just hit and miss and while i like teach corrupt certainly a lot more than four not more than five but it plays very well off of five half the yes half of the episode leaves you in that place where you're just like what are we doing, man? And, and I think that's the thing for people who have not been enjoying the show that makes it tough. And I would say to this point, I like the show. I have liked five of the six episodes, some more than others, but I'm the overall. Like I liked how what we built was like this. This episode four is just—it's <laughs> like what happened. Um, and and also I think the mishandling of, of May and Osha, although. We have flipped to a place where at least the OSHA stuff is interesting again. I'm back in being reinvested in that character and where we're going there. Is it something I can see coming? Sure. I think you just have to come to grips in terms of the fact that the show is going to be very predictable and you're going to see things happen. But let's take what those things are and see what it really means to the overall. And that can determine, I think, whether this is good or bad. I think the overall execution is a mixed bag, but the things that are good are really good for me, and the things that don't hit, they're just kind of head-scratchers. So, this show, I think, just continues to be exactly what this show is, but at least it's getting stronger following the episode, at least for me, that I was just like, what are we doing? You know what I mean? And I'm fascinated to see where we go. Like I said, if it's Vernestra that's the, the master... That would be freaking cool. And that would be an interesting story. And then really put you in a place where it's like, okay, what happened before and what happens after? Like, if you can get me to a place... I mean, I hate that Star Wars is constantly playing with the past and the future simultaneously. Like, pretty much from always. But, like, I like the idea of a show getting you to a place where I go... Well, now I want to know what happened before, but I also want to see where we're going forward. And if you can get me there by the end of episode 8, I think the show is an overall success. So, I'm digging it more than I'm not. And this was definitely another step in the right direction of, like, doing more good than bad. There's just some tonally awkward things for what I'm hoping the show is. I'm like, just stop going to those places. Not that they don't work, because I laugh, but, like... You know, I want to live in that Chimer world. But I think the overall, like, what's going on with the Sith and how they could be hiding in plain sight, you're starting to kind of see the show that Headland had kind of teased. And if the last two episodes can land, show could have been better than what it is, but I think on the overall, what, what we've been given is pretty solid. So I, I enjoyed Teach Corrupt. Um, it was cool to see the, the the whip saber, even if it was just for a brief second. But again, that's like one of those things where are we are we trying to tee up Vernester in a way where we want to go backwards or forwards? Or is this just going to land on the Mother Coral all end of it, and you're, you're just going to be like, oh man, like she was always dark side, 
Jacinto was on Brendock, like, because he was already an apprentice. Like, uh, there's two paths, light and dark. Which way are you going to go, show? I uh, will find out next week. But that's it for me. Uh, I, you know, I, I enjoy this. I continue to love Manny Jacinto. I want more for him. I would take an entire series, an entire trilogy. You just put him front and center, and I would watch that story all day long. Um, but where he's going, how he's manipulating Osha, how that's all playing out, I loved all of that. And starting to, to you know, Cortosis, the rule of two, like laying the crumbs into more of the Sith stuff, I really dug. The Jedi stuff is hit, hit and miss, but on the overall is cool. So I'm going to shut up, flip it over to you. What are you thinking of The Acolyte, Season 1, Episode 6, Teach slash Corrupt? Uh, did this episode work for you? Did you enjoy it? How are you feeling on the show as an overall? Um, are you kind of where I was? Where it was like, we were kind of going in a good place. We hit some rocky parts. Think we're going back up to a good place. And then there's just things that make you scratch your head. Is everything working? What do you think about the Ocean and May stuff? I think my biggest issue at this point with the show is that and the execution of that. How's that playing for you? Um, what do you think of the performances? What's Manny Jacinto do? Like, uh, now that it's revealed... Is that character working or not working? What do you think is up with Vernestra? Like, why is she doing the things that she's doing? Could she be the Dark Sith Master? Or is it someone like Mother Coral or maybe Mother Anasea? What do you think we're going to get next week? Are we going back to Brendock? Are we going to get the rest of that story? And how does that tee up a finale? And is that finale Solomay versus Chimir and Osha? Anything you got, good, bad, indifferent on the Acolyte. Season 1, Episode 6, Teach Corrupt. Put it down below in the comment section. Look forward to talking to you down there. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you're new, you want to come hang out with the C-Man anytime. We're talking movies, TV, trailer reactions. You want to be here uh, next week when we see Episode 7 and possibly the other half of the Brendock story. Um... You want to see what I got on the movies that we saw yesterday? We'll be uh, we'll have some immediate reactions coming up, uh, which are probably already posted. So if you want to check that stuff out, make sure you check that stuff out. We got more movies to watch. I think I've got theoretically six more to catch up on by the end of this week, like including Minions. Um, so if you want to be here for that, you want to show a little love and support, you want to help grow the channel, you dig the vibe. Well, hey. You can do all those things for the C-Man. Simply by jumping over there, hitting that subscribe button, come join the C-Maniac Nation. Hit that little bell if you want those alerts. And until next time for the C-Man and Cinema Sit Down, I've been the C-Man. I'm signing off. Peace. Hey, what's up, C-Maniac Nation? Winter Ken here, where we grow out our roots and our beard, letting you know that you can see some new C-Man videos right up here and right down here. And if you want all those videos and show that man a little love and support, come join C-Maniac Nation right over there, and the C-Man will catch you on the next one.